I think most of us are here, we either would work with firms or set up our own firms, or we work in industry, being tax managers and tax advisors. So what we are to discuss today is tax practice management. How do you manage a tax practice if you want to be on your own? And it's the whole idea of dealing with, as Aisha mentioned, the GRA, dealing with your staff, dealing with your clients. So you see the kind of interested parties that you would interact with. And that is the crux of tax practice management. It is something that I think we should consider, Mr. President, putting in our syllabus. Because in the law practice, we teach them law firm management. It's a full course together with legal accountancy. So that is what would help you a lot because you are looking at how you manage your firm, run it so it can grow. We all know how PwC started and then KPMG, the Pitmawi, Gudilia, and so they are all growing. Ernst and Young is now EY, Panek and Foster is PKF. So as we grow, we summarize the name into alphabets. <laughs> So now we will soon have GKO. Uh, or is it GOK? <laughs> George Ohini Kretia Consulting, GOK. So all you need is attaining the goals you set for yourself. Why did you set up? When people come for uh, interviews at the law school, for example, they will tell you, I want to read law because I want to help the downtrodden in society. Lies. You want money? Tell us. I think lawyers are making money. They are driving flashy cars. I want to also drive. Come and say, I want to help the downtrodden. Then go and join the NGOs. <laughs> so if you are here, I'm not sure you are telling me, oh, GRA is uh, uh, frustrating people. I want to save them. Tax Jesus, we beg you. You just want to make money. Tell us. So you have to set your focus and then you head towards it. If it is about making money, know what it takes to grow your client base. Know what it takes to use relationships to get referrals. And then you can grow the practice. But in doing so, that is the reason why we then need professional ethics. Because we are professional. And you need to live by certain standards. Otherwise, you mention your name and nobody even wants to deal with you. And with the professional ethics you develop for yourself, you carve a niche for yourself. As you mentioned, you go before the GRA, they're like, oh, you're welcome. What can we do for you? They've gotten some level of respect for you. So sometimes, like he mentioned, sometimes when they say we don't want to see you, we want to see your partner, it's normally not necessarily the fact that you don't know what you're about. But they have established some relationship that they, are, they think that if your partner was here, we may not go into certain things. But if he's not dealt with you before. So you see, all of you mentioned, after some time now, there was that rapport. You can even contact him when it's no, you know, that is how it starts. You need to build it. When I started with KPMG, it was the same. Sometimes I have to beg my boss, George Quitty, if you are good, yeah, I'll follow you. Then from there, they start saying, oh, you are with George. Okay. Then you establish it. Next time I can go alone. So it is not anything to do with it. It's building kind of some rapport and the ethical values. You learn when you move with them. So the idea of ethics is all from a Greek word, ethicos, or from ethos. And basically has to do with morals. What kind of morals do you have? We keep saying that morality is with the person. CITG cannot change your morals. You are coming with certain upbringing. All we want to do is to say, in this our practice, if you have this moral, leave it there. It's not accepted here. That, that is what is going to is telling you. It doesn't mean there are certain lifestyles, morals, speech, walking, dressing, it belongs elsewhere. It belongs elsewhere. So you need to know that here, when we talk about somebody has good morals, then we think that he is ethically sound. Why is it you mention somebody's name and everybody says, oh, this one can't help you. How did that happen? So you need to think about that. So it is virtually about what is good and what is bad, what is right and what is wrong. That is all what it is. 
if a taxpayer owes the GRE, then you tell the taxpayer, you see, uh, your one million Ghana cities, if you can bring uh, 500, let's go and talk to the officer, and they will pay five, 200, and that matter is dead. Who is selling that idea to the taxpayer? And yet we turn around and all of us are saying, GRE officers are corrupt. Who is corrupting them? Corruption is a giver and a taker. Demand and supply. If they come and audit your client, he has failed to file returns on due date, the first thing is to look into the law. Is there anything I can do to bring down the liability? It's not about going to see somebody to try and... You see all the noise going on in social media about our respectable chief justice. When it goes out there, it's not now about whether it is true or false, right or wrong. The image is gradually being washed down as it keeps being banted about. So that is what we want you to be. So look at ethics as defined by the Oxford Advanced Learners Dictionary that it's moral principles that govern a person's behavior or the conducting of an activity. How you conduct yourself as a tax professional. Who do you interact with? What do you tell them? How do you guide them to do what they do? It's all shaped by you. So we need to be mindful of doing the right thing all the time from the training we have had. It's not been easy getting the qualification. And you can imagine it being disbanded just like that. Like uh, it was mentioned, you hear of we are here to see that here. I'm waiting. Mr. President is a tough man. He trained me, so I know. He doesn't joke with ethics. And if you don't know me, I will tell you today. After that, I will and beg him. I'm sure he will give me some three days fasting. And as a Muslim, I can do it in 30 days. <laughs> he is also a pastor, a reverend. And those who don't know. So you can imagine. I think we may have to start. Our code of ethics is always given out. If it's not, I'm sure Registrar will share it. Then we have to start dealing with people. If, and for all you know, Justice Webborn is here. The criminal court for tax offenses is being set up. Everybody is looking at taxpayers. Uh, tax practitioners and tax administrators, we are all caught. Because if you look in the act, it tells you any person who interferes with the work of an officer, you commit an offense. So, like the accounts will say, Ming Kai, my ladyship, Yao, but we may bring a nurse to fish out those who are corrupting the GRO officials. That's why I say I won't go to my ladyship's area. If I know you, you won't collect goat and yams. I know what you will collect. My ladyship, I hope I've not come in before you anytime soon. Yes, my lady. So if you look at Whittington and Pani, they mentioned that ethics has been defined as the study of moral principles and values that govern the actions and decisions of an individual or a group. So the decision you took, let's do this, let's say this. And today the trend has been caused coming from all TV and radio stations. What is their problem? Oh. Uh, be ready. They are start, I'm going to tell them, oh, let me hear your position. And I was with my revered professor right now, and I raised the issue. And I said, Prof, if they say it is faith check, would we not apply accrual concepts? <laughs> So if you have the faith that it will come, then it will come. So bring the tax. Because proposed dividend self, we collect the dividend tax. So faith check. I think Julian has been commented. Because he has made the matter well. And for those who may have advised that, because a lot of the radio presenters, they even know the tax. They are telling me, oh, we hear it is from a father to a child. A child is not taxable. They are seeing at 592. So you see where now you will show them that hey, all that data is not good. And he even the, if that was still the case, he changed the matter to say it was a group the daughter belonged. Then it means he has even escaped the exemption. Mm -hmm. hey, <laughs> so 
I don't want to go there before the next time this man is recording. You say, Kremoni, you did sell the way here. Well, we're in a man. Okay, can't say, you know, me patch out. I have Reverend George Quetia here. I have Reverend Elder uh, Professor Obanienji. I'm Petro Bia. And I'm not grabbing your ring. So remember, the professional ethics is governing your behavior in a business environment. So, don't think that because it's a business environment, if I'm doing any other thing, it doesn't matter. It follows you wherever you are. It's a tag. It's on you. So, wherever you are going, you are an ambassador of CITG. That is why if you look at the law, any slight thing, they are disciplining. Like the person who made these charges just resumed this year from four years suspension you know, without practice. He just resumed this year. My senior lawyer free for he's going to make another allegation. So you can imagine. I was thinking, is it that he doesn't want to practice again? Because <laughs> coming back from four years, you come and raise it, they give you another, you will go on pension in, in suspension. So let not that befall us. So normally in professional bodies, we put our ethics in the code. And that is why you hear code of ethics. ICA has it, ACCA, all of them. And so we also have it. I remember the late Adibay, so rest in peace, uh, did a lot of work on that, so I know you have a code of ethics. So the fundamentals of having ethical values is that you must have integrity, who we'll deal with it, you should be objective. In your, if your client is wrong, he is wrong. That when you go with your uh, tail between your legs to the GRA, you don't go in the posture, hey, I can change the fortune. Don't go and be doing so many bubble power. Hey, my sword, yo, my lord. Yeah. Don't go and prophesy England winning the cup. Say me more, say me more, VAD. Don't assure your clients. Oh, I can talk to the GRA. We can reverse this liability. Yeah, that's your problem, oh. So if you are able to reverse it, what happened? Oh, task consultant Banza. You give the tag to yourself. Professional competence and care. You are trained professional. We don't want any wayside. And you know there are a lot of pocket advisors and professionals. And that is what we want to read out. And I'm sure the members of council are here. And they are even battling with issues of people being invited to have hearing. Uh, this sector. Chartered issue of tax accountants, or a whole lot of bodies. Please be careful. Confidentiality. I remember when we're in KPMG, there are particular clients that my boss, uh, George Quetia, were assigned to you. Nobody sees the files between the two of you and the partner. That's confidentiality. So sometimes don't think we are not being given jobs to do, we are not being made to handle the big, big. Oil companies, multinational, some information is sensitive. You don't need to, to get it out there. So they are very particular. They don't get, if you see a bit of it, some part of it, they want you to do a, an opinion. They pick it and you go away. But it doesn't mean they don't want you. And I, will, I think now we are not there. We can mention when we are dealing with payroll of big multinationals, how can you give this out? When stand someone and say, hey, you know, you know the job I did? Charlie, MG, stand chat. Oh, just come out. You see, you see the problem. So your work, every for And remember, now your work is even more difficult than ours. We have Data Protection Act. So it's becoming more difficult. Then the professional behavior, we've said a lot about it. So let your professionalism show as you move along. The other one is the professional diligence. If we say you are diligent, then you have persevered to ensure that what you are coming out is the best of the best. Conscientiously, you've devoted time to ensure that you, that is why you hear of due diligence, due diligence before the acquisition of companies and shares and what have you. That is what it means. Have you persevered to ensure that this transaction, the figures we are seeing, the documents we are referring to, are things we can rely on. 
Because you can see the load that you are carrying. Then I remember my days with Isaac. No document will leave the office. You come, you even bring a comma. I will say, the comma is not there. I so said, I thought this way, yeah, it's not, it should be there. Diligence. Because one single thing can change the whole understanding. Okay? So, the issue about professional diligence is more of the honesty you give in respect of the work you are doing. You don't look at the money you are being paid. We have that challenge with professionals. Oh, I'm going to get so much. So, you want to do whatever it is to get the result. No. That would not let you be diligent. You overlook certain things which will be a big problem for you in the future. So it's about honesty and good faith. If somebody has the faith in you that you can deliver, then it's because of the work that you've done, the experiences you've shown, the results that you have to show that you can do it. Now the biggest challenge, integrity. Integrity. Is it one of the words in your motto? What is your motto? What is our motto? Diligence and integrity. And integrity. When I say what was your motto, I thought someone would say Honda or Yamaha <laughs> or BMW, so I'm happy you didn't go that route. So I will take it from an angle. The other places don't get angry. Here you are. You went to Legon. What is the motto of Legon? Integri Procedamus. Right? You were in Commonwealth Hall. Your motto is true stance. You come and do Institute of Taxation, Diligence and Integrity. Then you are found wanting. You see, you should, you should be bad for life. Not to even get close to the practice. You, you get where I'm coming from. It means you've gone through institutions that are imbibing in you integrity. You landed professionally in an institute that says be diligent and have integrity. And then you are found not being honest. You are found involved in underhand dealing. You have a challenge. So when we talk about integrity, it is maintaining your appropriate ethical behavior so that you will be honest, you will be diligent, and the end result is that you will not be found wanting. This is what should guide you. We need to be careful about this because the challenge is always the race for the money. Consultancy fee. You see Timor in a BMX5. So you two, you want BMX5. When did Timor start? Where did he pass? How did he get there? You need to find that one out. That is what will give you a Lexus. Not that day he is driving it. So you have to also drive it. Like what somebody told me yesterday, he read that rich men take very light breakfast, like coffee and just biscuit for breakfast. That's how rich men behave. <laughs> then he also went and took coffee and biscuit. <laughs> went to carry blocks, construction, <laughs> and collapsed. You see, it is not related to. And when I said this, somebody was there who told you that's what rich men take as breakfast. Integrity. Okay? is the most important that you need. And know the ingredients that you need to maintain integrity. Keep your word. Keep your word. Very important. If you start giving different size of stories to your client, he won't tell you, but he's written you off. Because one can correct. And let's say, what can I say? Like the child who came to the house and told the mother, tomorrow I'm not going to school. The mother said, why? Say, Monday. The teacher said, five plus five is ten. Tuesday, I went to school. The teacher said, six plus four is ten. <laughs> Yesterday, Wednesday, she said, seven plus three is ten. Then the mother says, so why are you not going? No, until she makes up her mind. <laughs> As to which one is correct, me, I'm not going back to school. So you see, it means the teacher did not explain. So even if you are changing your word, there should be a reason. Justifiable reason. 
Otherwise, you think we say if you say one don't change it. No. Can you justify? It's very important. Then keep your commitments. Keep your commitment. My lady will tell you people take cases, they finish taking the money, and now they don't even appear in court. The client, where is your lawyer? My lady, I didn't hear from him. Scanasa. So don't go and take a case and now, oh, GRA has come to, they want to lock my shop. Eh, so what do I do? What do you do, sir? You collect the money and said I can defend you. Now GRA is there, locking his shop. What did you do? So note that carefully. Pay attention to your environment and stay focused. When we talk about your environment, the client you are representing would come from various sectors, oil and gas, mining, and all that. You, every environment is different. You don't go assessing an insurance company like a trading business. It's not allowable, it's allowable matter. You know it, you've gone through it. So if you don't know this, you go, the revenue does anything, you also accept, you walk away. For example, like we say, we are not we are not to discuss matters in court. But I'll give you one example for it that we are disputing an issue. The revenue is telling us, well, we did the same for other companies. They didn't complain. Why are you complaining? Ah, then you see that no, maybe their advisor did not give them that approach. Let's deal with our matter. Don't tell us. You understand? Yes, that is when you are looking at the environment. I want to show that maybe what you, the environment you decided is not the same as mine. I will fight it. It's not like you don't like the GRA or you are drawing the attention that the environment is different. Okay? Then surround yourself with honest people. They say, show me your friend. Now show your character. And then bears of the same feather flock together. So if you are with the people who want Jack, how far? Uh -huh. They will take you far. They are the people who caution you, you stay on point. Then take responsibility. Take responsibility. We've had instances where a client make a deposit. We start the issues. GRA insists, no, this is not going to be. We will not. We say, okay. We wanted to help you. You, the client, you are going behind us to be talking to GRA. Collect your money. We return our fees every now and then. It's not about your money. Take your money. It's very important. Next time. And me, when you do that, I've taken responsibility that if I want to do it, I'll do it. You say, you don't want me to do it, then go away. So you hear it out there. Don't mind them. They'll me out straight by George Great Isaac, Nyami Professor Mani, MG, and Madame. So but the news out there, oh, Ali or Chen, Homan, or Jumakura, or yet they won't tell you why I won't do it. They won't tell you. So maintain that it's not about money. They'll call, oh, if it's the fee, we can increase it. I say it's not about money. You, you don't have integrity. You are not honest. You want to drag me into your mud so we all become dirty. No, be careful. Be very careful about that. And then respect your employees very important your employees like the lawyers i keep telling them the court clerk you go and meet in a law firm knows the law more than you because he's been filing processes i remember when i was in a lawyer i was doing work for lawyer fuga a new lawyer came prepared some divorce papers then i heard the clerk telling him oh lawyer i want to see you what when five papers you are here, he said, Oh, something I want to show to you. He said, What? He said, The papers you are filing is not supposed to be a writ, it should be a petition. <laughs> you what do you know? My friend, get out from. <laughs> so the man saw I had it. Then I said, What? He said, Oh, he done something I was trying. He said, Don't worry. Then when he lost the case, the man came to me. He said, Oh, accountant, auditor, you see the thing we're discussing. He has been thrown out of court. <laughs> so you see, when you go in there, fraternize with them. You can ask uh, George and uh, Isaac, PwC, KPA, they have these big, uh, these dispatch guys. Yes, they know what is written. Sometimes when they look at your letter, they can tell you, oh, you left something in the letter. They can tell you. They've done it years. 
And for all you know, he's read partner quick just letter before. So he looks at your head and he says, ah, this will be the type, the type of thing I found. But I can't see the mention of the check in it. But he's saying, find attached. So he can come to and say, oh, there's nothing attached. You don't tell him, what do you know? My friend, go. Employees. And if they are in the office, if they are not the dispatch people, they are the people who do all the computations, capital allowance, PAYE schedules, and you are signing off. If they are messing up, you are signing your death warrant. Signing your death warrant. Because if you are that critical, they fear coming to you. They will come and say, this one, if you go, you will by all means find something. That's said, then don't come. Until <laughs> there is nothing to be found. And when you are appreciating them, please do. So in conclusion, we are saying that as a tax professional, you are there. There is the issue of public trust in you. Don't betray it. Otherwise, you find yourself in problem. And then it is there to guide you. If we talk about you following ethics, being diligent, have integrity, just a guide. You are who you are. You've made your grades, your qualification, but now you need to shape your professional life. The work you do, how you do it, how you want to be perceived is all on you. Okay? And then you realize that a lot of the problems we are having, government is not achieving target, taxpayers are not complying with tax refiling requirements, they are not meeting deadlines. Who are the advisors? We have fought for an act which has been shared to you, Chartered Institute of Taxation Act. And in it, in the Tax Administration Act, we fought for it to be put there. We can represent taxpayers. What again are we going to do if we mess up? They will just take it out. Or if you, I'm sure maybe my bosses here will testify. The regulation they brought. Trying to regulate. They say, have you even been able to register all taxpayers? You want to register tax practitioners. It's not your ambit. We will come to that later. Then you are also required to be a watchdog for your client and for the revenue because penalties can apply if you mess up. So that is what we have for you. And in recommendation, we are saying that training on professional ethics, diligence, and integrity is key, which is a good thing we are doing this. If you look at all the topics you've gone through, it borders on your life from now till ever. And so you need to embrace that very well. And as we indicated, the CPDs and that uh, Mr. Nyami talked about, you have to be attending them. We need to build your capacity. Things keep changing. Like they mentioned, laws would have changed. And yet, I got a letter from a lawyer who said that our client withheld tax, rent tax on renting a place for their offices. He is aggrieved by the deduction and giving us three days to pay back the difference or they'll take action without recourse to us. Mm -hmm. The client ran to us with a letter. See what you have done. You've made us withhold tax. I said, oh, don't worry. Put it down and go. No, no. They said they'll take us to court. I said, they said three days. This is day one. <laughs> Two days to go. The second day they called, came to the office. I said, this is day two. Tomorrow is day three. And they say after three days. So they can't do it on day three. And the letter is interesting. Uh, what the withholding you did is against the provisions of section 11, subsection 6, and for the avoidance of doubt, find attached the relevant section. And they photocopied and added. So the third day when I had rested, you know, that's why we say from taxation, you can be a pastor. <laughs> that's why she put so many is elder. Dr. Nami, have you? gone up yet. You've not taken the pastor. No reverend. No elder. And you might be elder Methodist. You might be your mother superior. Aha! Mother superior. You see the tax. And then uh, president or so forth. You also went. Okay. All right. <laughs> because on the third day uh, so I also wrote but thank you for your letter dated so 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 and the attached provisions of the law with all due respect the provisions you refer to have been amended <laughs> and i also said for the avoidance of doubt find attached the relevant <laughs> amendment 
They also photocopied the amendments and gave it to you. We are still waiting six years now after the three days. Because what they forgot was that just the name, that provision is the provision of five years tax holidays for construction, for sale, or letting of residential and commercial premises. Just the next year it was amended. You know, it said a person engaged in the construction for sale or letting. The amendment said a company engaged in the construction for sale or letting. So now it wasn't a person. And in terms of a person is an individual, a partnership, a company, they missed it. And this was an individual. So I said you should have rather advised the individual to set up a company to do the renovation and let out. Then you can go under that. So that's what the continuous professional education would help you to do. And so we are also saying that we will recommend as an institute, government needs to bring up a law on an ethical practices in this country. You shouldn't be left with the institutes. I see have their own lawyers. We need to have a general one to deal with professionals if they won't regulate themselves. Thank you very much for your attention.